Nick, I would like to hand it over to you just for a just for a minute to set the stage in terms of the essential ITSM ingredients and the ITIL service lifecycle. Maybe you can give us some explanations about this and how this links into today's webinar. Sure. And if you look at this, you might think that you're you're going around in circles, and you, you see all these circles here, and it talks about service strategy, service design. This is sort of the idle service like site. And like I mentioned earlier, this may be a little bit too much for, for some of the people here. And, and fortunately, with ITSMUF, now there are work instructions that tell you exactly what to do before, and, and you know, Typically, what, what most organizations do is they use their ITSM tool set to figure out how to implement service management. In particular, if we're talking about asset management or software li license management, there may be a module in there because, you know, IDLE is just a framework, and it doesn't really provide those, those work instructions, and it turns out that that's really the way to go. Now, if you take a look at all these individual pieces, it's kind of like we go back to this cake analogy. It's 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 kind of like baking a cake. And if you're going to bake a cake, you're going to have some flour. You're probably going to have some some water. Uh, maybe you put some sugar in there. Maybe there's baking baking powder. There's probably going to be some margarine or or some butter. And so taken individually, all these things really aren't that tasty. But you put them all together, and it works. And you and you've got a cake. So that's kind of a, a quick overview of, of IDLE in a, in a nutshell, or, in, or maybe I should say, you know, IDLE in, in, in a cake. So go ahead, uh, Bernard, uh, back to you then. Okay. Well, baking the cake, what would be the essential software asset management related ingredients? Um, on the left side of the slide, you see um, typical ITSM processes such as uh, deployment, request management, problem incident management. But the core components which would relate to license management really deal with license and software inventories, um, the understanding and management of product use rights. Even more important to understand what you have in your contract in terms of metrics and how they need to be calculated. On every software you use, there stands a contract on top um, governing the terms and conditions. And there is a life cycle that needs to be managed. And of course, every piece of software has a financial dimension. Um, using the ITSM recipe to make software asset management, um, well, Today's trend is clearly, and I was on a conference in San Diego last week where this was discussed by 500 people, um, is to view software asset management as part of the overall IT service management strategy. In the past, this hasn't been the case because um, in the past, um, people were struggling with translating the definition of software from the ITSM definition to a software asset management related definition. Software with regards to ITSM is primarily defined as a technical object. Software needs to be packaged. Software needs to be deployed. Software can be requested. But there is nothing about what does software really means in terms of product use rights and metrics and the entitlements. This is part of software asset management. And this is why in the past you could see both disciplines going separate ways and not really matching or meeting each other somewhere in the middle. But the fact is integrating software asset management into ITSM can really enhance multiple ITSM processes and it can fuel such processes and the most obvious processes where SAM can have a very positive effect on is software deployment request and problem configuration and change management. So there is today a significant gap between ITSM and software asset management's understanding of software and how the two systems handle the software asset. And well, trying to bake the cake, um, you have all the right ingredients but without integrating SAM and ITSM, it's like trying to bake the cake without a pan or without an oven, and the result uh, might be disgusting. When we look at this process blueprint here, um, well, the 
process you see right in front of you is the most commonly used process when it comes to software. Um, I call this process end user centric because here in the middle the end user requests software. The request is um, articulated or um, is sent to a kind of app portal or a definite software library, so some type of repository where users or admins can select the software according to the request from the end user. Then there is a check whether a license is available. It's a stock check. It has nothing to do with active reharvesting. You reserve the license, and once there is a license, you this goes to the deployment, and some type of system center software will deploy the software um, to the user device. As we see, this is very end user centric, and only a few people recognize that probably 80% of all change requests or any request at all do not relate to the end user. They relate to any kind of technology change. For example, you're restructuring your data center. You switch on another virtual server. You plug in a couple of more CPUs uh, or you change to a new CPU generation with a higher number of cores. You change your virtualization platform. All such changes do not directly refer to an end user, but they massively, um, they massively um, influence the way how software needs to be requested, managed, configured, and deployed. So companies following an end user process only are trapped in this process, and they will see again and again, they will realize again and again um, how this puts difficulties on them when it comes to an effective management of their software. Um, so before we really start with how ITSM processes can integrate with SAM processes, I would like to set the stage and outline some of the complexities you find when it comes to managing software from a licensing standpoint, from a compliance standpoint. So on the left-hand side, you see that the data that is needed to populate your inventories, so the technical data for your software inventory. And it starts with file information, MSI information, add remove program keys, pad, package names uh, and um, package names, AD uh, software group names, or even with ISOTEC. Well, this is helpful information when you sit on the ITSM side of the fence, but when you sit on the SAM side of the fence and want to do compliant, um, this is this is not helpful. It needs to be translated. And this translation is done on the back of a catalog Aspera has to offer. It's called the master catalog. And there is a rule-based software recognition that is using this rule. And the rule works with inclusions, exclusions is part of to finally identify the licensable product. The licensable product is what you would like to see in your reporting, in your compliance reporting, or in any SAM and optimization-related reporting. But the licensable product is still not the final goal because many, I would say the majority of software titles you have to manage are not licensed by device, by user, by install. So they are not following a simple one-on-one -on -one metric. They are licensed like the Oracle CPU or the Oracle named User Plus, the IBM PVU, RVU, UVU, the SAP user types, concurrent, uh, concurrent user metrics. So there is, a, there is a whole universe of weird, sometimes crazy metrics out there. And the information that software is installed or deployed is just one piece that you need to calculate according to the metric. So what any catalog should bring um, with the, or, or any catalog as part of the SAM tool should, should, should contain is the metric calculation. It should have the algorithms built in to understand what really needs to be counted, how it has to be counted and calculated to finally show your effective demand. 
A good example here is to refer to an IBM product. Let's say it's IBM WebSphere MQ processor and it's licensed by PVU. The software inventory, and that would be an, inven uh, an inventory you could probably find in your ITSM tool, shows the number of installs. And here in the first line, we see there are three installs. And the second line, we see there are 23 installs. But for the compliance reporting and any type of software asset management related reporting, you would like to know the effective demand. That means what you have to prove against IBM, what you have to show in your compliance report. And this is the PVU count. And the PVU count is not 23 installs. It is 53,200 PVUs based on the topology you deployed this WebSphere product on. So ITSM systems, they don't know this. They don't know the metric calculations. They cannot tell you how many licenses you need to cover your software usage. Um, let's do the following exercise here. Let's say you go out shopping, go to the grocery store, and um, you want to buy a couple of things. You want to buy juice. And here on the shelf, on the top, you see there is a juice called Capri Sun juice. And you want to buy five of them. And then in the middle, there is um, an apple juice 10-pack box. And you buy two of them. And then uh, on the lower shelf, you have the lemon and lime combo where you want to buy one. So you purchase three articles in total. And to translate that in the software language, it means you would acquire eight licenses. But you still really don't know what you actually purchased because you didn't take care about the SKU, the manufacturer part number. Because only with adding the SKU, you would understand that if you buy from the top shelf the Capri Sun juice, you buy the SKU R856571, which means it's a pack with five juice boxes on. In the middle, the SKU, where you buy a quantity of two, that gives you a bundle of 10 boxes each. And on the lower shelf, well, you have the combo with lemon and lime. So you buy one, but actually, actually you get two boxes of juice. So again, you purchased three, you acquired eight licenses, but effectively you acquired 27 entitlements. And it's not that you just um, uh, acquired a number of entitlements. Each entitlement comes with a different set of product use rights. So the Capri Sun uh, juice box is a software as a service that expires in 12 months. The mods bundle, so that was the pack in the middle with the 10, uh, with the 10, uh, 10 box each um, uh, uh, juice container. Well, one license comes with 10 product use rights. And on the lower shelf, the Ocean Wave Suite, that was one license, but it was lemon and lime. So one license entitled you for two different product installations. I think this is a very nice um, this is a very nice picture to describe the fundamental different, a difference between what is software seen by ITSM, software as a technical subject, a subject that needs to be configured, um, that needs to be deployed, compared to the software asset management view on software that is way more granular and understands the product use rights, the metrics, and everything around the contract.